Hello, I'm Cameron Ford from Ford K9. I wanted to go over some of the typical terms and definitions that are used in the detection dog industry. And we'll get to those right after this. So today I want to cover some of the common words used in detection. Now there's a lot of words used in training, different definitions. That's for a different video that my friend Mike Ellis did and I'll link that above. What we're going to cover are the typical words used in detection and go over some of those definitions to help you guys if you're new in detection or to help if you're confused with certain words that are used. So the first one is easy. Odor. Odor is defined typically as anything that is a chemical type nature. So explosives, narcotics, firearms, electronic, arson, so on and so forth. Those get the classification of odor. Scent is our next word. Scent is going to be things related to uh, living items such as human or animal and sometimes certain organisms uh, sometimes maybe even certain types of uh, entomology items or certain types of bugs may get classified as scent depending on what they put off. There's going to be some overlap from time to time, but there is a difference as of definition between odor and scent. Now, when we train odor, which we also sometimes call target odor, we also train on the next word, which is distractor. Distractor is something that is not related to the target odor. It is something as novel as dog urine or dog smells or food or anything that would be described as distracting to the dog. So distracting odors are things, remember, not related to the odor. Next word is proofing odor. Proofing odor is something related to the odor, but is non-target. So for example, when you're a narcotics handler, uh, you may have your narcotics packaged in a evidence bag with evidence tape. That evidence bag, evidence tape, or canvas bag, or nylon bag, et cetera, those get related to the odor because of your training, but you need to proof off of those because they're non-target. So if you're in the sport world, things like Q-tips, gauze, Wattman paper, you name it, if you saturate it with odor or it's related to your target training odor, then that's gonna be called a proofing odor that we wanna make sure the dogs are not alerting to. So you'll set up training for proofing odors and that shows the dog should only be hitting on that target substance that you're training on. So the next terminology that we'll use in relation to these things is typically called not at source. Not at source typically means your dog is in odor, but it's not as close to the odor as it possibly could be. You'll hear many trainers say not at source. A good rule of thumb to think of is you might be within six to eight feet from that location where your hide is at or your target odor is at. So when you hear not at source, keep that in mind. Now, on the same topic as not at source, a word is typically used or, or a saying is fringe odor. Fringe odor basically means not at source. You're, the odor has drifted down from the location where it's been hidden and the dog is indicating at that fringe location. So, there's sometimes some confusion it comes into because fringe odor can be a lot like what is defined as inaccessible hides. Inaccessible hides are things that are placed high or deep and the dog is not able to get their nose on it. So you have to be careful when you're training that if you're doing or you're working on fringe alerts that you don't cause confusion when you set up a inaccessible hide. And remember, inaccessible means it's going to be high or deep in a search area and the dog cannot get to it and they cannot put their nose very close to it. So again, keep that in mind as you're doing that. 
as we talk about odor, a couple terms get brought up frequently, and these terms are also used interchangeably a lot. And that is residual odor and lingering odor. So the first one, residual odor, means there is going to be some type of chemical item on the substrate of wherever that target material is put out. So let's say I put out narcotics, I hit it in a drawer, I pull the narcotics out, there could possibly be residual particulates attached to the substrate or the surface of that area. That's residual. Lingering odor means I have no, there's no substrate uh, contamination, there's nothing left behind on the surface, but the odor is still present until it burns off. So that's lingering odor. Lingering odor, think of if we ate all the popcorn in the house, uh, someone comes in an hour later, can still smell a little popcorn even though we cleaned up, there's no popcorn left around, popcorn odor may still be there. That may not be the best analogy, but that's the easiest one for us to kind of understand. It's something that'll burn off over time. And even with residual, residual means it's still attached to the substrate, like I said, that too, depending on the chemical, will eventually go away. But this is also why we have really good cleaning procedures to help us uh, reduce that residual uh, chemical that's still left behind by our target odor. So lingering odor, residual odor, hope that helps on those definitions. Now let's move to the next. Alert and indication. These are terms used a lot back and forth between whatever area you happen to be in or what region. So alert is what we define typically as when our dog has told us they have found the target odor. So when the dog, let's say, sits down and is staring at the wheel well of a car, that is the alert or the trained final response. Whatever it is, that's what typically we call the alert. Trained final response means the dog has done whatever behavior we have trained it to do to tell us the odor is there. So whether it's freezing up, sitting down, laying down, whatever it is, that's your trained final response. These are also known as indication. So indication is a little bit more on the science side of a definition, but whether you use alert, trained final response, or indication, we're all kind of saying the same thing. So, Typically, when people are describing the behaviors prior to the dog's trained final response, we use the terms change of behavior. Change of behavior simply means those behaviors that are consistent to what the dog will do prior to giving us its trained final response. So if your dog does rapid sniffing, maybe a nose purge, meaning it blows its nose out a second, or does a little tap dance and then gets ready to sit down, those are considered your change of behaviors. It can look like the next term I'm gonna use, which is interest. Interest doesn't always mean something your dog is interested in in relation to the target odor. We can know that interest can be what they smell of dog food in the space or smell of distracting or proofing. You will see interest it's important as a canine handler to know how to describe your dog's change of behavior in detail as it relates to your target odor. Also be able to uh, articulate what your dog does when it shows interest in something that's non-target and why these two things are different. It's important because if you can consistently say, my dog does this type of change in behavior prior to giving me a final response, or my dog shows this type of interest behavior in relation to something that's distracting or proofing, it helps you articulate, hey, I know what my dog's doing. So the next one goes into false alert or non-productive response. False alert typically is defined as your dog alerted at something, gave its trained final response to something that it is not trained to detect for whatever reason. And there, we're not gonna go down those training holes as to why that happens in this video, but the term false alert most oftentimes means 
your dog gave its trained final response to something it's not supposed to alert to. We can also term this as a non-productive response. Both of those basically mean the same thing, but non-productive response is a more fancy way of saying false alert. So another thing that you're going to hear as a handler is cueing in relation to typically the false response or the non-productive. You might hear a trainer say, you cued your dog. And what we mean by that is you did something that the dog interpreted as, hey, I might be right, or hey, I might be getting my reinforcement here soon. So that cueing is a term that we use to describe that. We also can typically call it bias or handler bias. There's a lot of times as handlers, we may do things because we think odor is there. We saw our dog do something and our behavior changes. So we start doing things that might show our bias as to why that's there or why we think something's that area. So as a handler, our goal is to not show bias too much and we do that. Okay, a little more technical, reinforcer. Reinforcer simply means reward. Whatever we're using, food, toy, types of toy, that is our dog's reinforcer, which means by using it, we are rewarding our dog in hopes that it keeps doing the things that we want. So a reinforcer is typically gonna be associated to when they find their target odor because they did whatever train response. And there's different ways you're gonna use your reinforcer throughout your detection training. While we're also doing that, we also have conditioned reinforcer. Conditioned reinforcer is typically a signal, also known as a marker, also known as a bridge. Condition reinforcer is like the bigger word and marker and bridge fit under that condition reinforcer term. Marker can mean different things. And again, that video I talked about with, with Michael Ellis, he talks about markers and talks about bridges. So I'm not gonna get into big detail, but for example, a clicker is typically called a marker or using a word is typically called a marker and also called a bridge. It's just a audible signal that predicts the reinforcer. That's just why it's called a conditioned reinforcer because before we started training, that word, that whistle, that click had no meaning until we associated it with a reinforcer. So conditioned reinforcer just means some type of signal that is known to the dog that predicts the reinforcer. Next, in that same kind of category is what we like to call a keep going signal. A reinforcer signal that means, hey, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. So if my dog is, let's say, sniffing and staying at odor, I might use the word good. Good does not mean they can leave. Good does not mean that reward's coming. I'm using good to say, hey, keep doing what you're doing. That's called a keep going signal or a duration marker is another term for that as well. So keep going signals can vary depending on the person using them. Usually after the keep going signal, depending on what the objective is, it's followed up with a condition reinforcer and or the reinforcer itself. So progressing on, when we are doing searches, some of the things that we do is called negative, blank, or all clear. All of these terms basically mean there is no target odor present in the search area. The search area has nothing that we're trained to detect in that space whatsoever. So you'll hear people say negative. They also may refer to how many items are negative in the space. So for example, if you're searching, let's say 10 cars, eight cars might be negative and two cars might be hot. Hot meaning it has target odor on it. So we will use terms like negative or the search was negative. We didn't find anything, nothing there. Again, also referred to as blank, also referred to as all clear. Now, another couple terms you're gonna hear when it comes to how you work as a handler and your dog a little bit is scan and detail. So scan simply means our dog is free to search the area in whatever way that they are searching. 
We're not directing them whatsoever. The dog is going around the space, scanning that space. When I say detail, means this is where the handler gets involved and may present the area. When I would say presenting, that's another term. It means the handler is using their hand, sometimes maybe their body position, but they're having the dog deliberately search to where they point or where they present to the dog in that area. So scan, like I said, means they're free to run around, search that space whatever way they want to. Detailing means I'm gonna step in and help that dog search that area either through some type of my communication through my hand signal, my reaching out to a spot, pointing to a spot, something like that, and that's defined as presenting. Like I said, these are just some of the terms. These are more or less the common terms you're gonna hear probably most often in detection. If you have more terms you wanna describe, link them down below. Just tell us, hey, we also call this whatever term. Or hey, Cameron, you forgot some other good ones. Here's these. Please, I love to have those down below. All this is about sharing information so that way sometimes new people coming into this can understand better the type of vernacular that we're using when we're doing detection dog training. And remember, as usual, please like and subscribe to this channel for more great content that we have here at Ford K9. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. <laughs>